Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we will be going over the text tool. Now, in lesson two, I went over all of the tools, including the text tool, and I showed you how to change your font, your color, how to put the text down on your stage, and so on. In this lesson, we'll be focusing more on the different text types and some of the new features that can be found with the TLF text engine. So let's get started. First, in your details box, I have a sample file ready for you to download. If you could download this, you'll then be able to follow along with the lesson I am providing here. So just go ahead and click on that download link, download the file, and then we can open it up. To open up the file, you can simply go to File, Open, and then locate the file in the folder that you saved it and just click on it and click open. When working in Flash, you'll typically be working with three different text types. The name of these texts will depend on which text engine you're using. So if you have Flash CS5, let's just click on the text tool here for a moment. You'll have an option between classic text and TLF text. With classic text, you get static, dynamic, and input text. With the TLF text tool, you get read-only, selectable, and editable. Basically, these three types are interchangeable. Read-only is static text, editable is input text, and dynamic is selectable text. That's basically, from what I gather, from what I've used, they're pretty much interchangeable. Now, the TLF text engine has some differences with it as far as other functions, but on a very basic level, these three types are interchangeable. So for right now, let's focus in on what each of these does. Static text basically allows you to put down some graphical text. Let's say you just want to put some text down for people to read, and that's it. That is what static text is used for. Now in the classic text setting, you don't have to worry about if people have the font you are using or not, because again, it's a graphical display. So the same goes for the read-only text. Read-only text for the TLF text engine is used just for reading the text and that's it. Input text allows the user to input text, let's say into some sort of online form that you're creating. Let's say you want them to be able to put in their name or other information. You would use this type of text for that. And you would use the same type of text in TLF text, you would use editable for that, for people to be able to go in and edit the text box themselves. Finally, dynamic text is more used for action script purposes. You can change it with the action script, you can do all sorts of different things through the action script code. And on a basic level, it allows people to highlight the text and copy it and basically just interact with it on a very basic level in that way. And the TLF um, component of this would be selectable. So those are the three basic text types between the two different text engines. I touched on this before, but I'll just say it one more time and elaborate on it a bit more. If you are using a font that others don't have, and let's say you're working in a group with a bunch of people and you um, send your FLA file, your project file, for someone else to work on, when they open up your file, they won't be able to view the text as you are because they might not have the font that you do. Unless if you're using a more widely used font, you know, like Arial or Times New Roman, or if they so happen to have that font installed on their computer. The same goes if you are maybe showing this to someone. Let's say you export your project and you have input or dynamic text. The um, font, again, if you are using a font that they don't have, it will just, not show up. It'll default to a default font in Flash. And so if you have a graphical interface and your font is really a highlight, this might be a concern for you and something to keep in mind. 
If that is a concern, you can embed your font into the Flash file by clicking on your text tool and coming over here to the character um, properties in your properties inspector and clicking on embed. Here, you now have access to all the fonts on your computer. You can go through, choose what to embed, you can name the fonts, you can choose which characters to include, and so on. Just keep in mind that if you embed a lot of fonts, it could really blow up your file size. You don't want to do that. So, you know, be just cautious with it, but at the same time, keep in mind that not everyone is going to have every single font that you have, especially if you're using downloadable fonts or something similar.